Give them to me. Welcome to the podcast at the end of the universe with me, Herdermagur, and Damien. Herdermagur today. Hi, everyone. Welcome to 2022. Oh, my God. We made it. Yeah, this is the promised year, right? Uh, well, I, I haven't heard that, but I'm just surprised we made it this far. Uh, I was quite, I was shocked. I'm still processing 2020, to be honest. And there's a whole year in between now. Absolutely shocking. What have I been doing with my life? I mean, I like that you think about that about a single year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is episode 11, so we did 10 in the last year. Yes, we are crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just uh, another one, and we've got Faulty Towers uh, matched. There we go. So, you know. Yeah. A couple of and it, this is just as good as and well written. A 100%. So we call it quits at 12. I'm, I'm happy with that. You? <laughs> I didn't learn English from a book. I didn't learn English at all. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I guess, should we... I've heard other podcasts occasionally, Damien, where they talk to the audience like that's what you should do and like say sometimes like, oh, it might be your first time listening to this. I mean, I just can't imagine that. <laughs> if it's your first time listening to this, they'd have stopped by now. I would think so. But, you know, I think in our defense, we're pretty consistent in what we put out. Not that and I use that in a very generous way. Um, you can, I think, there's nothing chronological here. Uh, you, starting here is as good as the first one. We don't introduce ourselves. <laughs> I don't remember us introducing ourselves at the beginning. It was just like, hello. So, biscuits. I mean, I just don't see why it matters. No. Like, who we are, really. You know. Well, I, I know. Do I, this I, is a high fucking energy podcast, by the way, if you're listening to this. Strap in for some fucking fun. Strap on for some fucking fun. Yeah. Woof. All right. That's Woof. it. I've already spent. Do you know what's funny? Bums. Bums? Bums. And sticking things in them. Yeah. Are we talking about anuses or homeless peeps? Because it's much more fun to stick stuff in homeless peeps. <laughs> stick things in them like, you look hungry young man here have this corn cob <laughs> yes really yeah, get uh, it in there yeah I, so I was just saying to Damien before we started recording Damien was talking about where he lives there are uh, policemen going up and down the fire escape constantly <laughs> to those raucous top flats I meant to tell you this last time um, there was I live in Indianapolis in America, which is a city of a million people. Uh, and uh, I meant to tell you that on the last one, um, at some point there were five people shot in one night. I don't, know, I don't know if they were shot dead, but five people were shot. And the police chief came out and said, don't worry, everyone. It's not a serial killer. <laughs> They're nothing to do with each other. You think, oh, good. Oh, well, good. That's, thank God for that. It's just random then. It's just random people shooting each other. Fantastic. Yeah, it's five separate um, killers. They can do more damage that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, late last year, uh, someone outside of my apartment building uh, was shot um, because I heard gunfire and a death gurgle. Like a scream like you've never, you know, not just a scream, like a someone is dying scream and the, called the cops and they came and didn't find anything. Right, okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, got out of my apartment the other day. Um, right outside the door, there's a bloody syringe. Ah, beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, living the dream here. Nice. I don't know why I wanted to bring that up. Just wanted to make sure that everyone knows. No, this, this podcast isn't going to be fun. Uh, no, let's make a really miserable one. No jokes. <laughs> let's talk about my old man. <laughs> But really, yeah. and really put a and now the miscarriage statistics for Southeast Asia. <laughs> um, yeah, so there we go. What? What bloody syringes? Ah, oh, man. <coughs> so what? Yeah. You, what, we're, we're thinking heroin here. Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'd, what else would it be? 
I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, we haven't discussed this on the podca- podcast, but I have medicine now that I have to inject. And every, every now and again, I will... Heroin isn't medicine, Damien. No, it's just a good fucking time. And every now and again... It's soul medicine, is what you're saying. <laughs> good for the heart, good for the mind. Good for <laughs> nothing else. Uh, yeah. Well, I, surely the only problem with heroin is just it's so expensive. Hmm. I mean, if they were just giving out free heroin, you'd just have the yeah. effect of, like, of no one's on the streets doing heroin. They're just all, you know, in bed. Very nice. Looking after themselves. Balanced meal as well. That's the whole, that's the problem. Just skipping, you know, skipping your biscuit time. That's the, that's the problem, the prohibitive cost of heroin. <laughs> also, to quote Harry Hill, it is a bit Moorish. <laughs> Maybe they could think it, work on that or something. Um, yeah, what were you going to say? You're, you're on medicine. Yeah, so I, uh, I've, 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 to, I've missed it a few times in the morning, so I'll take, take it into work with me and I'll just do it in the changing room. But I, it's a little syringe and I've, I always stipulate I should just leave it somewhere. Just really start fucking with people because no, I've I've had to. Yeah, I mean, you're you're like one step away from burning something down now. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I fucking hate places. this place. Uh, <laughs> you mean the restaurant you work in, or just anything. this place? You mean like this plane of existence? I mean, I would definitely say L- London could do with a bit of a carpet bombing. I mean, I didn't say that, of course, but definitely could. But I didn't say it. <laughs> Walking around London, going. Hitler was a piece of shit. Look at all this. He could have demolished all of this. <laughs> Unfinished work. That's what I say. <laughs> that's the problem with Hitler. Lazy. Problem with heroin. Too expensive. Problem with Hitler. Lazy. But yeah, I mean, I've, my fucking workplace can fucking be burnt to the fucking ground. Jesus Christ. It's, um... Well, medicine first. <laughs> I brought that up. Oh, no, just the, um, obviously you put some filthy syringes lying around. I've... I've stipulated that I might just start le- leaving these peppered around the place as well, you know, just uh, frighten people and see what's up. No one would, no one will peg me, of course, but you know, right? Yeah, just uh, I mean, u- upset. I don't know what to say to that. That's yeah. I mean, please don't do that. I guess <laughs> <laughs> leave it in the fridges, you know, when someone reaches in to grab the goat's cheese. It's like, oh, yes, that's right. There's that little piece of me in you now. Serve the twenty top like a beautiful Christmas ham with like just a syringe right in it. <laughs> just eat around it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, over the Christmas period, one of uh, the most joyous moments for me was Damien sending me <laughs> uh, not only an unsolicited but an unexplained uh, couple of pictures of. I, I couldn't even say it's a toilet overflowing. It's. Uh, how did you describe it? Let me just look. You described it as your Omaha Beach, I think. <laughs> or something. Well, yeah, I mean, it goes without saying that you are throwing them up, of course, right? Uh, people yeah, should see. Yeah, okay with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the toilet's permission, I assume. Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'll just call this episode 2022 and have that th- that as the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, what a beautiful uh, evening it was. Yeah, um, I'm not finding them, so if you could send me them again at some point. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Of course, I've um, got them in like my favorite an album of favorite photos. It's so I can I get, you, I can get it up at, at a mount a moment's notice. <laughs> Yes, my um, girlfriend so... was very disappointed when she was replaced with an overflowing toilet. <laughs> but I had to make her understand, of course. You see, you should cha- you should change her profile picture when she calls you to that toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, part of me wants to now, but I, yeah, playing with fire there. I don't think I'm going to get away with that one. Um, I mean, I suppose another bad taste thing you could do is um, if your girlfriend looks like. Uh, a slightly more attractive celebrity, like put that as your her profile. Picture. <laughs> That's sure to get you single again, maybe. Yeah, and I thought what I would do is, um, uh, I'll, I'll just put a picture of one of my ex girlfriends instead. <laughs> oh no, I actually no. She was saying, oh, she's when having the, one of those like, fucking naff couple conversations. Like, if you had a pass, who would it be? And she, you know, I was like, I'm not answering this. I'm not fucking touching this. This is, yeah, you know, this is gonna get George. me. George. 
shot in the fucking head. It's like, what? Who would you do? And I think she came out with like Chris Evans. I'm like, okay, fine. Chris Evans. From, yeah, from TGI oh, Friday. Okay, sorry. <laughs> For a minute there, I fucking, I fucking thought Chris Evans was Chris Tarrant. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the weirdest fucking yeah. pass ever. Chris Tarrant. Chris Evans is he Cap? Yes, yeah, but for the I'm longest sorry, time, I have a real when that hard time beca- when he became uh, popular, I knew Chris Evans as that little ginger guy from like fucking Channel Four chat shows in the nineties. Who does that's Top Gear? Night. Of who, who married Billy Piper? I was going to say Billy English, and that's not a person either. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've just aged yeah. ten years. <laughs> you know, listening to all those pop musics. Yeah, you know, with that. Wacko Jacko and what not. But, oh, yeah, so she was pressing me for an answer to this question. It's like, all right, I told you mine. You know, you, you're a good sport. I'll, you know, t- I'll play along. Go on, who would you do? And it's like, I got fed up with this. And I really, I went for a killing stroke here. I just said, my ex girlfriend. And killed it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, what did she say? Did she see the humor in that? She did, after a long conversation and a lot of tears. <laughs> 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 Where I had to reaffirm my love and remind her that she's the only one for me. <laughs> but I thought it was fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, well, I have, I, um, I did... I've made sure that we'll never have to have a conversation like that again because I can always, you know, bring that out of my little trick bag and, yeah, well, self fuck myself. Um,. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I've never played those games or anything with a girlfriend, and uh, I just don't see, I just don't see, like, how that can end well. I'd... It's like if you, like, like, pin someone to the wall and we're like, what do you really think of me? Like, tell me, tell me everything that's wrong with me. Like, that's not going to end with people being happy. No, not at all. Which is um... why I wanted to, well, I avoided it. I mean... So what did she say? She said Chris Evans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, why? Oh. It, it seems nice, but... I don't know. That's, who she, that's her biggest celebrity crush, so... Okay, cool. He's a good-looking dude, I guess. How about it if he walks in right now? Um, <laughs> or like, what do you want me to or, say or to like that? like she you says know? your dad and you say Carl Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think she's... She'll have... If that ever comes up again... She'll have something really spiteful in the chamber. I mean, it could just, she might just turn around and say, like, yeah, your dad. Your dad. Which would, you know, cut me right down to fucking size. <laughs> and and then she explains enough, why. But, you know. He's like you, Damien, but better in every way. He's taller than you. He's more handsome than you. His skin is more leathery than your skin. <laughs> He's just better in every way. You Does better he still believe use it. the... Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's fake tan now. He, I don't know when he oh, got rid of the, the tanning beds, but they, they just vanished inexplicably, which is just as well, because last time I ever saw that room, you couldn't move in it for empty beer cans, which is odd because he hasn't drunk beer in like three years. He's almost exclusively <laughs> yes, odd, drinks, yes. drinks gin now. So why that's, that recycling has been in there for years? I don't know if he has any ambition to actually move it downstairs to the recycling bin, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was to make room for more trash like that. They, that those beds had to go. Or That's a good point, Damien. We're looking at the whole consumer trash thing wrong. You only have to recycle things that you throw away. Mm. So just don't throw anything away ever. Yeah, and then there's, there's no climate problem whatsoever. They're completely green then. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, your dad's bedroom must have been the only, only room in Britain with five tanning beds where people weren't growing weed. <laughs> Yeah, they must have had an eye on him, I suppose. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much heat they kick out or anything. I mean, I guess they do. I've no, never, they, I've never tanned. I'm sure you can like pick them up with some sort of thermal scan. That's what I've heard. I mean, I don't know if it's an urban legend or what, but that's how they would, you know, they have those copters go up ahead, and that's how they would find certain things if they were, you know, rooftop or anything like that. No, well, it, I, it, it is true. It is true. But there are certain misnomers about that. Usually, they have to be looking i they already have to suspect you because mm-hmm. they can s- well um, this is a few years ago so maybe it's better now but they can see if you've got a massive growing operation where you're you've got loads of lights and are generating loads of heat they can see it if they get close right with thermal imagery but if it's just like a helicopter going over a city i don't think so mm. so i guess the conclusion is if you're going to grow some 
weed illegally, then, you know, cool your house off. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I'd like to think that they would, you know, pick up on that. They do have him under some kind of surveillance. But I remember when my dad would come out of, you know, he'd finish tanning. Because he'd have this operation where he'd have two tanning beds upright and he'd just stand in the middle of them. <laughs> and while he would do that, well, he'd have, he had a little TV, like, directly in front of him with a built-in DVD player. He'd put something on and he'd drink a four-pack of Stella, you know, while he was on the, the, those things for, like, essentially 90 minutes to two hours. He would come out... Or practically purple. It looked painful how much he would tan. So I like to think if you know there was thermal surveillance, all that kind of stuff. You know they absolutely find they they get a readout on yeah. the, on the uh, all the UV lights and have you, and they just get a massive thermal reading that's also moving through the house. So why, why is why is that light on uh, you know on foot? What's going on here? You can... Yeah, it's it's like starts off as just like a policing inquiry, like operation. What the fuck is going on here? And then they just ascertain, like, we can't establish there's any crime going on or anything. It's just weird. We have to, we'll have to give this to MI5. <laughs> just, like, two people, two highly trained agents in MI5 for the last two years, their entire job has just been trying to work out what your dad is doing. <laughs> and there he is, slowly rotating in the oven, basting in his own sexual juices. <laughs> <laughs> well, for all, all the hip tank stuff, I've got a tiny little food rotator, which is meant for... Food photography. Right. It's it's, it's basically a, it's a circular plate that um, rotates very slowly, but also very um, st stably. That's a word. With a high degree of stableness. Okay. And um, wh when I bought it, uh, they had them in all sizes. I bought the smallest one. And the biggest one... Um, I think it was like $1,500, and if I had the money, I'd have got it, because it was like a full-sized one, up to 100 kilograms. If I ever have the money, I'm going to buy your dad one of those, so he can just just stand on that <laughs> and just rotate. <laughs> I mean, if I had the money, I'd go, I'd go to his house and build a track, so he doesn't have to rotate. Just they both can. <laughs> yeah, both uh, both yeah. the tanning beds. Yeah. Yeah, like proper sci-fi it up as well. No. Get some whooshing noises going. Get some blue blue pipe lighting around the corners. Nah, that's that's yeah. too entitled for what I want. It's like a sort of lazy Susan type apparatus, but I want it um, mounted on gears and and have it kind of have some kind of gear shaft feeding it up up vertically. Um, so he has to operate it, but essentially he's got a pull cord, like a sort of curtain uh, called for a curtain. He has to pull that would rotate the platform for him. So he gets his tanning, but he has to fucking work for it. Oh, well, okay. I guess if we're going to go like that, because your dad is essentially Jack Sparrow, we should put him on an enormous futuristic pirate ship so he can say to people, raise the sun mast. <laughs> and then people like quickly like are pulling loads of pulleys, <laughs> climbing all over the ship. And then it's just this, this enormous sheet of sunbeds. <laughs> so, no, very, yeah. no, no, no! It's just his bed sheet. So all you've got in the middle of it is one. It's just well, it's a big, like a queen size bed sheet, which with a massive fucking dog shit stain through the middle of it. <laughs> it's it's clean. He's washed it several times, but that that stain isn't. I was coming to say, out. It's ne yeah, it's never coming out. And if you, yeah. you want to press your face into it, you can still smell it. But otherwise, it's 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 workable as a bed sheet. You know, as long as you're not entertaining guests. It's workable as a bed sheet. <laughs> it can still operate. That's how they sell the Metro newspaper now. You can read it. You could use it as a bed sheet. You start a fire with it wherever you want. <laughs> it's a Swiss Army paper. <laughs> Scrunch it up into a ball. There, you got a nice meal. <laughs> Lots and of fibre. A cork if you if you have the shits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how did how did your dad get into tanning? It's such a weird. Oh, um, I don't know. Just that. Uh, Leftover from the uh, remnant of the 80s. Um, and just his excessive vanity. He just always... I think he always wanted to be Mediterranean, really. Um, so he just wanted to... Sure, I mean, I, I, I was just going to say, like... I mean, I, I don't know. Like, was it a big thing? Was it like, oh, you're, you're beautiful, but you're not maximising your full potential because you're not sufficiently brown? Well, he, I, well, somewhere along the way, he's definitely got that idea in his head, yeah. That, uh, yeah. yeah. The paler his skin, the more un attractive he becomes but conversely this got, got get so out of control that he would become purple 
I mean, I guess it's a bit more under control with fake tan. He can't really overdo it quite so much, but yeah, well, he's not blasting himself with radiation anymore, but still, it's like, I mean, you're 56, man. Come on. <laughs> Just be happy your hair hasn't fallen out. Yeah. I mean, uh, it can't be good for you. No, not at all. I mean, I speculate that that might be one of the reasons that they suddenly just evaporated uh, um, one day because they were. It was a daily thing, and then suddenly they're not there anymore. I mean, that's quite a ha that's that's that's, that's a considerable habit that's suddenly been broken. So I don't just imagine that they just kind of broke and he got rid of them. I think but maybe something happened and he had a little bit of a health scare. I don't know. Nothing he would tell me. But yeah, you right. Think that would you just dispense with tanning altogether? I don't know if he had like some fucking you know large. Uh, ever so slightly large mole re removed or something like that. It's like, you can't do this shit anymore. They had to remove him from the mole. <laughs> that mole's out there living its best life now. <laughs> that mole's um, Brian Wilson. You know, it's one of those dogs now, I'm sure. <laughs> we just put a wig on it. <laughs> that mole is the proud owner of a network of holes. Because <laughs> um, he would tan a lot. Like, you're talking hours a day. Yeah, every day, without fail. It was odd. Yeah. It was not good for him either. I remember, yeah, he had another... No, of course not. What, uh, back in the day now, he had another one of his drunky friends that he used to do it as well. And Mike, but between that and the the sheer volume of wine that they would fucking drink, Jesus Christ, it looked like you know, their face would go so red. It'd be a mixture of so many weird colours between the tanning and the, uh, the alcohol. It looked like their skull was trying to leap out of their own faces. <laughs> it was. It was just. There's so much blood there. It, just, it looks like there's a lot of tension. It was just. I, they could just kind of like erupt at any moment. It's like, guys, are you okay? You look like you need like a lot of ice water and a and a lie down. Yeah, I. I guess as. I mean, nah. I mean, uh, 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 this is what makes this podcast the award-winning podcast. It is podcast. Um. I guess I just don't get it as well in that, yeah, it's vain and he likes doing it and stuff, but as we've established before, your dad is a, a recluse. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you'd expect that sort of behavior, you know, like I'm going to try and make myself look nice in someone who's trying to impress people, I guess. or You know, because when, when I get up, if I get up and I'm like, right, I don't need to go outside today. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to you know, do my hair. No, I'm just going to sit in pants and kind of, you know, sniff my own farts. Quite happy with that. But, yep, whatever. I mean, I... I prefer sans hosen myself. <laughs> S just sitting around rubbing my, rubbing my dick on things. <laughs> yeah. Um, just for those listening, I've just recently visited him for his birthday. For those listening? Yeah, for, yeah, for, for me. all three of you. Just to clarify, I had a shitty little argument with him when it, my sister came to visit. So I don't mind selling him out here in this kind of space, be, bitching about him. I know it's petty, but I don't care. He's pissed me off. <laughs> but yeah, I speculate he, he does this shit because he, you know, uh, he lives a quite a rich on, on, not online life, at least on Facebook, at least. You know, there's a lot of posing for photographs. There's a, and, you know, thousands upon thousands of profile pictures that I'm sure change on a daily rotation with whatever he takes. I'm sure every photo he's, you know, bare bollock naked below the waist, but, you know, he definitely puts the top half together. That's a weird thought, isn't it? Yes. I too many weird thoughts with that man. <laughs> Best just um, to leave so him be. <laughs> you, never, you never told me about the toilet. <laughs> well, there's so much about that day that I really loved. I mean... Because I didn't, I, I didn't know what was going on for a while because it was just too busy. Um, I'd been in for a shit earlier that night and I could see that, you know, it was slowly getting blocked, right? Because I flushed and then, it, you know, the water didn't drain immediately. And I saw someone else had done the same thing in the other toilet because it was lovely and brown with a nice chocolate surprise in it. Um, so someone walked past me and says, like, are you seen what's, you know, the fucking... Uh, the changing room i just thought they meant they'd seen what i seen earlier um it's suddenly uh, i have to run back to the back fridge to get something and basically we've got a corridor in the restaurant that um you've got the toilets on one side basically the little staff changing room dead ahead and then access to the back kitchens uh door to the right but they are you know they're intersecting so if you're walking 
to that that kitchen, you are basically putting your head around the changing room, uh, you know, around the changing room anyway. And it's when I went to go, I don't know, pick up some fucking plums or some shit, I don't know. <laughs> that <laughs> on I, the toilet, yeah. I caught wind of something. I was like, that smells a little peculiar to me. And I... <laughs> <laughs> right. And I so when you say that, I'm sure it didn't smell peculiar at all. I'm sure you identified exactly oh, what I, that smell yes. was. Me- is that is, is that, that my food handiwork? Or is that shit? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I put my head around, and fortunately, I didn't put my f- uh, front foot in. But I was elated, absolutely fucking elated when I saw that. Yeah, you know, this changing room. You can't really see it in the photo. Is at best, maybe. It's less than 15 square feet. It's absolutely... Wait, fun. so so is this a changing room where there's like loads of lockers and then just yep. a toilet? Yeah, yeah. So you've got a changing room. No... There, are, there are two toilets. Yeah, you've got two doors. There's no cubicle it... then. It's just... No, no, they're, they're two cubicles just, you know, right. directly kind of... Yeah, they really kind of squeeze as much out of that tiny space as they can. And, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I just saw this. Um, uh, one inch of yeah sewage water just absolutely end to end in that fucking room but i could not fucking believe my fucking luck because i what well, for many reasons one because i've i've been at odds with how the restaurant has been handling everything with the pandemic anyway because they mm-hmm. were shoveling in hundreds and hundreds of people each night into a basement breathing recirculated air elbow to elbow I mean, it's towards yep. the end of the Christmas period, we were everyone got the. Vi- I mean, I dodged the virus again this year, but I was working around people that all had it or living with people with it. You know, it's just because we couldn't avoid it. We had to. People were just bring it in night after night. We had no way of avoiding it. So I thought, great, this is. Um, I, I know this smell is going to, you know, is going to find its way uh, to the dining hall, and it's surely going to push some people out of this fucking place so that's good for that reason but i was also on a little bit of a fucking crusade with uh against some of my uh colleagues and the management because against some of your colleagues yes because of how they were like this is great no 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 because i i had a dispute with them uh, the previous few weeks because of how they treat the stuff uh stuff and when i came back from my holiday they got the front of house team and then just basically got I don't know, they went to like a, uh, a secondary school and just picked, you know, like eight girls at random. So now we're working with a team of waitresses that are basically children and don't give a flying fuck, show no one any respect. And changing room is one of those things. They just come in, they don't... When you, when you say they picked eight girls at random as well, what Damien hasn't mentioned is that his employer is actually Boko Haram. And they just went in there and were like, you, bit bit fatty, you, you... Right, waitressing. Well, I've got, I've got a lesson. Nick. No, that's it. That's your life now. Uh, well, it could be. It could very well be because def- there's definitely a type. They are very jailboaty, and we've had issues with some of the stuff. Uh, don't, and... don't say that, Damien. Don't say jailboaty. Well, look, I'm. What do you mean by that? What? You mean the underage? No, no, no. But they're like barely legal. But we've got some, go- some of the people there don't know how to keep the- their hands to themselves. So we've got like pending sexual harassment fucking things going on at the moment. That they're de- not dealing well, like with actual suits. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had one guy. What? Yeah, I know. And there's a, there was a 19 year old pot washer, and there was a story that uh, one of them came into like the changing room and just started fucking grabbing her. Um, oh he's denied God. it, right? But they've. They've mishandled it. The CCTV proved nothing, right? So they couldn't, they couldn't confirm or you know, uh, or deny anything. Absolutely. So what they did was they sent her to one of the other fucking sites. But this guy's still working here. He adamantly fucking denies it. But though she was so upset with the way that the management handled it and the owners and what have you that she's taken it to the fucking police. This was like two weeks yeah. ago, and I haven't heard it, you know the follow up. They're not going to tell me. But like this dude came no. up to me because. Uh, um, uh, you know, while I was waiting outside, because I'm always the first person to turn up, they just don't want to give me a fucking key. He was the next person to turn up. He asked, he tells me that he's been accused of this stuff. He's like, "Have you heard anything?" He's like, "I was never going to hear anything. They keep this shit confidential." But thank you for telling me. Um, from there, I just like, I'm not happy being around this fucking dude anymore. Because you know, one of the guys made a very good point. He's like, "Well, we've got one of two things. Um, he's either a liar or a predator. And either way, I don't want to work with this fucking arsehole." Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I mean, I hope the girl takes them to the fucking cleaners. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, anyone listening to this, always go to the police. Yeah, the... you know, f- fucking go for it, go for it, because I've heard so much of this. Um, 
everyone I've ever talked to who's ever worked in a restaurant has stories like that. Yeah, you know, my, my girlfriend... Uh, my girlfriend had told me one that there was one guy that um, unhooked her bra in the middle of the dining hall while she's you know while she's working. It's like why did you not tell me this after the fucking fact? Why did you tell What's, me after? How did he, I don't. I don't. He unhooked her bra. Yeah, yeah. I guess he's got de- you know agile fingers. But we were dating at the time, and she, she waited like a month to tell me this because I don't like this guy anyway. And he's already fucked off. It's like I had a fucking yeah. I had a. Well, she 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 knew what you'd do, didn't she? Yeah. That's why. Very. She knew you'd get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this. There's quite a lot of that going on. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm aware. Yeah, but go on. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can keep going down this rabbit hole of people. Are, you, know, you want to yeah. hear about? Um, I, I won't mention names, of course, just for the sake of keeping my job. Not that it, we have enough traction here, anyway. But well, I mean, as I, as I've said to you, Damien, when when you eventually leave, if you want to, name and shame. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I say that, you know. My wife used to be a uh, server in a, a like, pretty, apparently nice, you know, four-star restaurant. And, I mean, one one day, the water stopped working, right? Okay. So you have to close the restaurant down by law. No, we won't do that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll get the guests to wash their hands with bottled water. <laughs> and she said, you know, at one point, she walked into the ladies' bathrooms... And one of the toilets was just full of turds. Excellent. Because there's no water to flush. I mean, like like guests didn't notice that. Guests, you know, yeah. hunters. <laughs> uh, you know, like I, it just like the restaurant industry seems so fucking poisonous. Yeah. I've never worked there, but I've met a lot of people who have. Um, I mean, the place she used to work at was owned by uh, a huge corporation. Uh, all corporate, mm-hmm. and um, you know they they got something like fifty million dollars in PPPPP loans. Mm-hmm. Uh, first thing they did was get rid of all of their house staff, all of their house cleaners, um, and then yeah, I, I knew someone who was working at the bar there. Uh, his roommate had COVID. Uh, he called them up and said, "My roommate has COVID. What should I do?" I can't get a test anywhere. This was a while ago, about a year ago, I think. Uh, maybe more. And um, they said, well, how do you feel? I feel fine. We'll come in and we'll take your temperature, right? Mm-hmm. Like that means anything. And then came in and said, okay, you're going to take my t- temperature. And they're like, what? No, we're not doctors. We don't have, we don't have thermometers. No, you seem fine. Get to work. Uh, that's yeah. criminal to yeah, me. It is. Well, it's, it's um, but not, that's, no that's how it all operates. In, it's yeah, nothing's enforced. So that you know, if the, no one tells them to be responsible, then no, they're not going to fucking do it. Yeah. Anyway, massive kind of massively derailed. My dispute well, was with the stuff. So I've got all all the front of house staff very young, and just don't care, which you don't at that age, and I don't blame them for that. But they just leave that fucking staff room in an absolute fucking shithole. They'll just. But what that ends up meaning is that my stuff will just get slung wherever is fucking convenient for this. It'll, stuff will be taken off the hooks, left on the floor, this, that, and the other. It's like I don't. And at one point, I just, when it you know started getting cold, I started wearing this long leather coat to work. Got a few compliments on it, but I would wear it with a hoodie, right? And I found I went um, for a cigarette break at one point, and I'd noticed on the hook. Um, no, where's this going? Go on. That basically my. Hoodie was gone, so someone had basically taken this coat off the hook, taken it apart because it's. I wear this. I would take it off as one thing, so the sleeves are in. It's you know someone has taken yeah. this fucking thing apart, and I had to stipulate and check my pockets as well. That well, one someone was clearly wearing my clothes. Um, I don't know to try it on because one of the dudes that was fucking saying, "Oh, that's nice." Could I, you know, this that the other was just trying to fucking see if it fits him or whatever, but. I don't know. I later found my hoodie on the. There's yeah. another coat uh, coat hanger, you know, rack of um, coat hooks by like the fire escape door. That's where it fucking was. So someone's, you know, walked out with it and fucking helped themselves with that. So I know that people are fucking around with my stuff. And there was another. So they, they stole it or they just wore no, it? No, they didn't. They stole it. They just, they just, yeah, they just wore it. But it's still a pandemic. I don't want anyone fucking touching my fucking stuff. And they don't supply I mean, the I'm going to say that's, it's weird. It's really it, weird. You know, f- 
pandemic or not, that's that seems really strange. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I, if it was just like yeah. a hoodie, right? I would think that someone needs to run outside quickly. They need to wrap up. They can't find their coat. Fine, but they've taken enough effort and time to take mine off the hook, and then pull take it apart. And, then, and that to put this fucking thing on when there are many, you know, adequate candidates to kind of keep you warm in, you know, in a in a jiffy. But no, that fucked me off. I also had my shoes on the top of some broken lockers they have in there. I went at the end of the evening to kind of put my thing on. Someone had put a fucking thumbtack in one of them. And I don't know. This was after the, I found that someone was fucking playing around with my coats and shit. It's like, is someone kind of like on a mission to fuck with me or something? This is odd. This is really fucking odd. So I, I was, you know, when I found that people were just taking my stuff, I would just kind of hide it in the bag on, you know, on the top behind the lockers, everything off the floor or at the back, and just kind of hope, you know, nothing would be in there. And after a while, I've now just put everything in the, um, in the manager's office because that's I know is locked and no one can get in there. It's fine. They let me get away with it. So I was pissed off. I, I spoke to these guys and said, like, you've got these kids fucking around in there. Um, quite frankly, I'm not happy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. More often than not, I mean, the thumbtack in the shoe—that's um... it's odd. You know, there was like a clipboard next to the thing. Someone tried to sell me on the idea of maybe it fell in from this thing. It's like, dude, it's like six inches from the ceiling. It didn't fall into my shoe. Someone just puts. That I mean, in when, there. Were, it was it was it you know prick up? Oh yeah, no, someone was definitely trying to you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess a harmless prank, but I don't know. I mean. Well, I don't know. I mean, that would fucking hurt if you didn't see it and put your... Well, I didn't see it. it. I put my foot in it, but obviously it, it, it didn't work out as they planned. You know, I didn't prick right. myself. I just... I was like, oh, that's a sharp object. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. And there was no resolution to it. They just said, look, we can't, we can't find out who it is. You know, they were very impotent about the matter. It's like, well, fuck you. It's like, I really thought I'd just go and find... I, part of me wanted to just go find this guy's stuff and to just kind of walk out wearing everything all at once, you know, and really f make a fucking point of it. But I um, wasn't that petty. But Fortune smiled upon me that evening, you know, because <laughs> all these kids that had been, I don't know who it was that had been fucking with my stuff, but I know they all leave their shit in a great big pile. They don't bother with the coat racks. They don't bother with the few lockers that do work. They just leave it all on the floor. And I, you, everyone has to climb over it, do this fucking acrobatic shit just to get to the toilets or to get to their own shit, you know, their own bags and what have you. And it really blew up in their fucking faces that night when all of their stuff was fucking ruined. I was fucking ecstatic. <laughs> So it was on the floor. And all then, of the, and then every that day there was of, an inch of shit water on the yes. floor. Yes, yeah, yeah. All their bags. So people, some people had their like fucking phones in there. All their handbag, fucking ruined. And I, you should, I, you should, I did not I'll do a victory worry, guys, lap. I'll sort this out. And then they just come in, and the pile is on fire. Oh man, um, they did not know what to fucking do. They couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, but. They basically isolated the. There was the pipes from like um, the customer toilets that had obviously been blocked. I think the mop <laughs> might be the problem. Um, no, no. Well, in the picture, yeah, that's them trying to like fucking jam shit there to work it through. But <laughs> what would happen was every I couple of that minutes, I thought mop would come up from the sewer. No, no, no. Like, that's what the sewer that would was spat that mop out. Genius brainwave to fucking dislodge whatever they could, and to no avail. The best thing was that. I have, you know, I would kind of peek my head around and watch these poor fuckers trying to do something about it. So every like two minutes, another inch of water would come up because every time a customer went for a shit, it basically come shooting out of this fucking toilet. <laughs> wow. Oh dear. <laughs> so what happened then? Did it did it get fixed, or have you just sealed off the basement now? Um. They eventually had to, you know, well, they had to stay there all fucking night to kind of isolate where it was coming from and dislodge it. Um, but they didn't do any damage control because <laughs> because there's no, re you know, they had to just basically keep mopping it up at the door so it wouldn't leak out into this corridor where, you know, customer would be. I mean, you could smell it, you know, there's no way you couldn't. And Did they have to call up those Egyptian scientists who made that robot that crawls through pyramids? <laughs> That, like, can, can we borrow or, 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 <laughs> or those divers that rescued those kids in Thailand? No, oh, I mean, that would re require assertive action on the part of the managers. No, what they did was they picked the two lowliest people, um, you know, on staff, which yeah. is one of the... Damien and George. Watches, yeah. uh, and this one of the runners. And they said, just like, mop up whatever you can until it's all gone. 
and these and they have to be in this room that's you know smaller than 15 square feet so there's no ventilation there's no obviously we're dealing with ha basically hazardous waste it's sewage you know it's a, yes oh, yes it's very dangerous but they had nothing they didn't have the gloves for it um no. so they did, you know there's no protective gear for them whatsoever so basically what they I, I i followed up on these poor fuckers and they basically given them piping bags which is what you use to kind of like ice cakes with they basically slipped their right, okay. hands and feet in those and just duct taped them you know uh, you know on the wrists and on the ankles so so they can kind of walk in there and handle things safely by the manager's right. reckoning Right. Yes. Right. And then, how do they get that off? Well, well, I presume one of the managers have to, you know, bite it off with their fucking teeth afterwards. I don't know. I but... mean, when you say as well that they they duct tape these piping bags onto their hands and feet, I've never had a pair of pants that <laughs> don't touch the floor at some point mm -hmm. in their life. I mean, I hope that these people were like completely bollock naked, apart from their hands and feet covered no, no, in no, essentially were... plastic bags. They were still in their no, like, of course not, like but... fucking civilian. Uh, and what have I hope you. it was but Frank were, and Charlie in the sewer. But they were like fucking cling film on themselves, so they don't get to try and do some damage control and you know not ruining their fucking clothes. I don't know. I just I don't imagine those guys got you know any kind of kickbacks for that extra work. They should do. They were fucking heroes because <laughs> they there's nothing there's nothing they could do. You know, the, there are no drains they could sluice that stuff out. Of. They just had to keep going over with a mop and just absorb it. You know, like sponge it up slowly but surely. And you should roll your trousers up over the knees and then put, like, get a handkerchief, a white handkerchief, and roll the corners of it and put it on your head. Get a deck chair out. You've got a classic English fucking summer there. <laughs> put a bit of sand down. Oh, that sand's a bit clean. Hang on, let me smoke a cigarette and put the cigarette end in it. There, yeah. that's better. Authentic. The cheeky bastard didn't think that you know to stop letting people into the restaurant either, even though that we were trying to stop sewage water from spilling out into the fucking dining room. So at some point, you've got to do something to about fucking public safety because this was fucking outrageous, absolutely fucking outrageous. They did absolutely nothing, and apparently they were there till like three in the morning sponging it up. When I discovered it, it was probably about ten half ten. So we're wrapping up to closing time, really. But we still got a full full restaurant, and people come in will come in right to, up until the last minute, and they were, and they never stopped them for a second. People were, you know, scratching their head about the curious noise that's kind of slowly making its way into the into the restaurant. But <laughs> no the curious smell. It's like, <laughs> it's like, please, hands. Sorry, can you just go around? If you're not going to stop them coming in, this is my suggestion. Can you just tell them, like, not to poo, please? I just want you to go table to table. It's like we have a one poo policy at the moment. Please, just do that for me. He's like, Damon, I don't think you're taking this seriously. It's like, no, I don't think you are either, my friend. For fuck's sakes, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd think like legally they would have to shut down, um, but you know, as we as we've both discussed. Legally, that means nothing. Mm. No, I mean, I remember someone I used to know told me that a uh, restaurant she worked in uh, might have even been like a Jamie Oliver restaurant. I'm not sure. But they had a problem with their, one of their sewage pipes. It burst, but it burst pretty much in the kitchen. And right. they were basically just kind of vaulting over it to kind of like grab plates and all the various bits and what have. But it was in the kitchen and they didn't fucking shut it down. You know, they're just like, this is going to get vacuum. We've got a wet vac. We're going to kind of go through this. But yeah, but this is sewage water, mate. You're going to have to fucking bleach everything. You can't keep feeding people. This is fucking no. obscene. Yeah. There are, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was, I heard that maybe f seven or eight years ago now. But they might, I, I dread to think how many fucking stories like that there are that just, you know, they sweep it under the rug. You know, I hope no one fucking figures it out. But I mean, the smell, surely should have fucking rumbled them <sighs> tell us the story about uh your colleague who got coronavirus and did the right thing and didn't oh come. yes yeah yeah yeah. because we we were basically kind of dodging the virus like it was almost like a physical thing in that last week before christmas because everyone was contracting it or there were a lot of people were turning up to work with flu-like symptoms, all colds and what have you, and they're all doing their lateral flows and rapid antigen tests, and it's all telling them that it's negative, which means they're eligible to work. We all know 
you know, it was coronavirus and stuff like that, but they didn't have enough to prove it. What they, not that it would really made a difference because the company was not going to support you if you uh, um, if you were sick. They were just going to say, all right, you're eligible to take time off, but we don't have to pay you for it. You can, if you have available holiday holiday days, you can book it as holiday and get paid for them like that. Otherwise, yeah, we have a base kind of sick rate um, for the week. So there's one guy, quite a couple of people that, you know, um, who just couldn't afford not to work. But there's one dude mm -hmm. who did, he put his foot down at the busiest time. At the, you know, it's kind of, in one respect, really shafted the team. And some people got upset about it. It's like, no, you really have, he's doing the right thing. And it kind of, we have to do extra work now, but he is doing the right thing. Even though if no one else is, comes back, you know, uh, I think it's like eight days later after he's, you know, um had it had corona yeah he's cleared of it now he's you know he's clearly not contagious anymore you know no no symptoms it's all fine well and good um but he didn't mind telling me uh that those eight days basically when he got checked his um paycheck on christmas eve no less had basically sliced it more than in half he'd lost uh, uh, i think he's, he's, he told me like 1100 quid in just mm -hmm. those in those in those eight days and um and he had to present word with management it's like, dude, this now, I I can't afford my fucking rent. I can't afford any of my fucking bills. What do I do? And it's like, well, we had the sick pay coming in. It's like, well, so what's that? And it's like, that's 80 pounds. Like, what the fuck can I possibly do with that? Yeah. And this this poor bugger, right? He, um, <laughs> next couple of days, he was kind of workshopping, like, these recipes with lentils and chickpeas. It's like, all I can do for the next month is... Uh, all I can afford is like beans to live on. So I have to make a few recipes here <laughs> and see if I can live. Because on top of that, right, um, we're, we're, we've got a monthly pay. This fucking thing, it's a five week month as well. So it's an excruciatingly long fucking time between paychecks and he has fuck all to go on. This, yeah, he's, he's, it's a wretched, wretched company. Truly, truly fucking and is. And they're opening their fourth restaurant. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, this this I was, yeah this very morning I got an email from the owners, celebrating the fact that one we're not going into lockdown, so business, business, business is booming, so much so they're opening up a fourth restaurant in the company, because they have so much they have so much uh, in terms of resources that they can fucking do this. <laughs> Can't and it's run by fucking... a trust fund baby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm right? sure. Oh no! This yeah. is the, no. That was the, the other dude. No, that, that, it's, oh, okay, okay. But um, she's she's fucking vile as well. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't quite Who, know the what. Boss? Yeah, the well, the owner. Yeah. Uh huh. Why? Well, just, again, you don't have to say anything that will identify anything. But nah, nah. Just a generally vile money person, you know. Very plastic yeah. woman. I, I think I do. Yeah. 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 A lot of that. Um, ex. You know, a lot of her fucking six-figure paycheck goes into like vacuuming another more fat out of her body somewhere you know that type of person um yeah right. well i mean oh, I have a bit, we, someone that we have you know she insists that we kind of you know play ball with we have to be friendly with i remember when i started with the company it was just after the lockdown but they'd had a um because one of the restaurants had a uh an open uh open air kind of dining hall they could have outside seating they could open up from the lockdown earlier than other restaurants because they that was that thems were the rules so they had a team that were helping kind of dig them out of obviously a lot of final financial troubles allegedly with the lockdown um so what they thought they'd do is they reward the team with um with a pay rise and i'd only been working there a couple of weeks but i was still eligible for this pay rise as well it was only 50p mm -hmm. an hour um, right. But the stipulation was, well, if you're going to reward these people, you know, give them a bonus. You know, I mean, I obviously don't qualify, but that would make more sense, for, you know, if it's legit, if a legitimate reward. Um, but of course, they, they, they present it as something you should be fucking grateful for. But the, the reality of the situation is, you know, uh, the restaurant itself did used to have competitive hourly rates, but now everything's kind of caught up with it. And then now people aren't interested. So they're basically kind of meeting the kind of going rate, but doing it in a way mm -hmm. that said we should be thankful for it. Um, and the only way if it were, if you were to kind of, you know, look at it as a bonus, you'd have to basically, you'd have to work um, like a, a year to kind of get that additional like grand or whatever it is, you know, it's, 
it's not a gift at all. But once, you know, they, they brought everyone in on their day off to kind of do this big announcement that basically was like five minutes, but, you know, everyone had to fucking cut their ass over London good... 90 minutes, two hours to kind of do this shit. We're all fucking furious. We all know, knew what it was. We could all have read this in an email and just kind of you know, mm-hmm. turned it away and got <laughs> bothered. But after all that, goes around doing a bit victory lap, just walking up to people and just saying, you know, handing out the, um, you know, their new contracts. You know, they got it all in writing and what have you. But not really like talking to these people individually, just going around saying, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's like, oh, fuck you. That is absolutely fucking revolting. We all can see it's absolutely transparent. No one's fucking buying it for a second that it's a gift because it's not. It's not. A, it's not useful in any way. <laughs> Doesn't even match inflation. No, not at all. And then you're doing this this smug thing where we should be grateful on top of that. No, 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 <laughs> not on. So how did that? I mean, did she did she see that people were not grateful or? Did that not matter at all? It did not matter at all. She, you no. know, they were raising it so that you know it would look a little bit better when they put the job ads out because they were still hurting for stuff at that point. So they just wanted a better rate to get yeah. people in. I um, mean, we yeah, you know, the people that had helped them, you know, uh, unearth these restaurants, you know, uh, post lockdown. So most of them were moving on to other things anyway um, because they've been waiting months to do something with their life, and then they had an opportunity somewhere going back to university or just looking at. Working in a you know a vocation that they actually gave a shit about you know no one wants to wait tables, um, but they you know it's like all right cool pay rise I'm leaving in like a week so I get so I will not see this in any meaningful way but thank you no um, yeah but that's not what it was about they presented a way that you kind of like yeah hey we're a kind of caring company but people know what's up you know we just have to tolerate it it's not written in our contracts but we have to fucking play ball and act like we're these people's fucking friends yeah um i mean here there definitely seems to be uh, a shortage of people willing to do garbage jobs for next to nothing um the family dollar mm. the family dollar uh, has a nice note on it saying no one wants to work here sorry we're gonna have to close early like, I'm not surprised no one wants to work there. Yeah. Every time I fucking go in, the person <laughs> behind the counter is making like seven fifty an hour and people are going, Oi, you're taking too fucking long getting my fucking cigarettes. What the fuck? Like, who would want to work there? It's fucking awful. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Just... This truly is the misery episode, huh? <laughs> I don't know if that's the, if it's this different. No. Nah. If it's that different. Uh, yeah. Oh dear, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it definitely seems like something is happening. I don't know if it's a quote unquote reckon, you know, economic reckoning or what. But um, I came across a weird statistic the other day. In the UK, two percent of people in employment work in hospitality, and in the US, it's more like twenty percent. Right. Okay. Um, for some range, for some age groups, I think it's like people over 40 it's like 30 something percent and um like when you think about it like you know those are those are hard nasty offless often thankless jobs for nothing like you're, Mm -hmm. you're producing i don't mean this as a dig but like you're producing nothing you're producing you know food that people are going to shit out and you know if if everyone collectively just decided i'm just going to eat at home Mm mm-hmm you know, no one would, no one would die, and then this whole massive segment of the economy would be cut out. I mean, it just, it just strikes me as like, this is all bullshit, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At this point, I don't call it food; I just call it pre-shit. You know, I, I have no attachment to it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, after, after you know, like having lots of friends working hospitality and everything and I probably really after all the stories at the very beginning of COVID about restaurants clearly not giving a shit I don't think I'll ever fucking eat in a restaurant again mm, yeah um, you know nothing against like specific restaurants or anything I just I just rather not I think it's a waste of money if nothing else um, yeah. yeah this is depressing huh yay 2022 2022 <laughs> Yes, I remember. I remember it, beginning of twenty twenty one, people were like fuck twenty twenty. 
Yeah, this is going to be the year. Hmm. Fuck, this is going to be the year. Like, I, I, am I the dude in 1940 going, it's not going to be over by Christmas still? <laughs> like, what, what are you thinking? It's not, of course it's not going to be over by Christmas. No, of course not. No, I mean, uh, I don't know. Do you do you want to talk more about Corona, or do you think well, that's I, a bit boring? Uh, I'm happy to kind of, you know, um, not really. I suppose blow, blow a steam, but I don't think that there are really that many remark. I haven't had any unique stories. Um, uh, it's just the kind of usual kind of bullshit. You got a lot of people that are flatting a lot of rules and face masks and stuff like that. More than anything else, it's just at least working um, in Soho. It's been people have been so fucking hedonistic and indulgent you know i've yeah. seen people you know well not only just was this restaurant pack i see people come back you know for multiple fucking meals you know night after night and it's like oh man yeah. it's like i've eaten in maybe two or three restaurants the whole fucking year you've eaten more in more restaurants in the like the last week than i have the, the entire fucking year how much do you really think you really deserve to be fucking fed you know it's i know i know it sounds corny and hokey and all that kind of stuff but it's a time for family and stuff like that if you love a fucking god can you not just spend time with them and show you you love them by cooking a fucking meal <laughs> apart from anything all right you want to argue that oh yeah you know you can't like grill like this at home but like i would always have this argument on like on a sunday when we have to do a fucking sunday roast it's it's not complicated. It is literally meat and veg in a fucking oven, oven. And, and you can't yeah. figure that shit out. No, fuck right off. You don't have, deserve to have someone fucking spoon feed you this fucking shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ! The times that things have come back, and this is like, uh, you know, we just like serve chicken on a Sunday, but we'd serve it whole, you know. And it's like, no, we yeah. we don't know how to cut it. It's just like, well, do you want me to fucking chew it for you as well? I mean, we well, don't know how to cut it. Yeah, they don't know how to cut chicken off, you know, off the fucking breast, you know. What? So, so like, so they you, it would be like a chicken that they would carve yeah. and serve out to themselves. Yeah, basically. Right. Um, right. Okay. Or in some cases, we just you know we we bifurcate it, we cut it in half. But you know, there's you know a lot of meat would still be on like the leg and stuff like that, and they can't fucking figure that shit out either. It's like Jesus. Fucking Christ! I swear to God, if some of these people like went to take a shit, they'd be trapped in the bathroom for hours because they're waiting for someone to come in and wipe their ass. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, I actually asked for this whole chicken to be butterflied. Yeah. Oh, oh I don't know. If there's, a, you know, there's one thing when we grill the steaks, everything's like you know sliced, and it's like it's such a drain on the time, and it looks terrible on a fucking plate once it's carved up. It really does. There's, the, there's only so ways you, so many ways you can polish that fucking turd. But you know, if we didn't, they'd be sent back every two seconds. Like, can you slice this for us, please? It's like, I, I'm sorry, I have to check with you, um, front of house. You do give them knives and forks, right? And I'm pretty sure you give them steak knives as well. So w w why are we wasting our time with the shit? And even even so, you know, if uh, like some of the rumps, what have you, if it's not cut thin enough, some of it will still be pretty chewy and they can't quite ma make it themselves. So they, they'll they need a professional to do it for them. It's like, how fucking entitled do you think you are? Jesus. Aren't you, enti aren't you um, tempted to, like, chop up whatever protein they have a problem with into, like, dice it into cubes and put it into a smiley face or something? <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't like an it open must be kitchen, a child. Uh, yeah, if it were, weren't an open kitchen, I'd absolutely do that. But yeah, it's a human zoo where I work, so I don't. Uh, I have to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. So, twenty twenty two, the nightmare continues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Off to a flying start. Today, tomorrow is my first day back at work as well, and I can't fucking. Oh, I'm just oh, chomping at the bit. I can't believe I've been away for so long. Love it. All right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't like cooking. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Not just cooking, but you know, all of the parts of cooking. You know, like unblocking toilets and things. These are all basic skills that you can constantly be improving upon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So turn... uh, how, how much raw meat can you get next to the cooked meat on the same chopping board? Things like that. You know, you're always always working on things, always improving. Oh, it depends who you ask. Yeah. I mean, it should be zero, but some people would get like a fucking metric ton on there. They don't mind. They'll do it in front. I've seen people like leave mints out for hours. It's like, 
Dude, you're right. Mince. Yeah, min- yeah, we mince meat. We, we, we make the burgers and all, all this kind of a shit with it. But they'll leave it out. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to prep it. And it's like, yeah, you need to do this before like service kicks off because it's just going to be there next to a fucking grill for hours. It's going to be unusable. No. Um, but that will happen. And then they'll be like, I'm going to the fridge now. It's like, dude, uh, you can't go and put that fucking away. The fucking restaurant has seen that you have left it here in the fucking heat. Are you absolutely fucking for real? Yeah. But the, one of the issues with this place is like you can't talk to people like that. So invariably, I get told off. <laughs> you, you, you're making them feel uncomfortable. Well, yeah, they're being fucking dangerous. That's why. And you've and you've actually acquiesced and let them put it away. They're going to use it again tomorrow. If um. I had the same issue with some like raw chickens, so I took it by myself to throw that shit in the bin. I got a slap on the wrist for my, you know for taking a fucking stand. We have absolutely I, we can't actually guarantee safety really at this point. We shouldn't be doing it. It's like no no no, but that's money gone. It's like you are fucking insane. I I like to think that out there, Gordon Ramsay's best friend is like. Yeah, I mean, I always knew Gordon as, like, a really mild-mannered, chill dude. I didn't realise he was like that until I saw his show. <laughs> Is that you? Because cause you're not like that, like, in in real life. You know, I, I've never known you to be, like, aggressive or anything, mm. but it's interesting to hear you say that, because... Oh, no, I've I've really... <sighs> yeah, it's... um, I've been... It's much more chill where I have been, but at least before the lockdown... Um, like that, uh, I was working Liverpool Street. Well, um, at that point, that was my first taste of you know w- uh, working at a managerial level, and I obviously, in some respects, wasn't equipped for it because I was couldn't. I didn't realize you had to tolerate bullshit like that to up to a point. I didn't know where that point was. Um, I had a, I, I had like a zero tolerance for it, and when people answered back, I was like, no. If I'm doing this, I'm kind of, I'm going for it, and I was screaming at people constantly. I really despised the person I was, um, or I had been for a long time when I left that job. Mm. Um, I vowed I'm not sorry. to be like that, but it keeps bleeding back in because if you don't, people will make. It's all right, people cutting corners because they're feeling a little bit lazy, this, that, and the other. But you know, they are going to be left to their own devices, fucking dangerous. And you know, it's one thing in a closed kitchen, but you're doing it with no shame in front of people in front of paying customers i mean i there's a part of me that kind of respects it because in a twisted way because i have no respect for our customers with what i've seen with the pandemic it's like yeah maybe you should fucking endanger them but yeah but, I, know what you mean. Uh, I mean not not real not really but the part no, of me not is really, like, but i know like, i know, oh, I know the feeling just yeah. Wanna, yeah i just want to not really after like opening up with i think i'm gonna leave syringes everywhere yeah i don't <laughs> You know, hey, you know, one of for your some, fillets is actually bomb. For someone, right? Yeah. It's not a syringe. What it is, it's a free fucking meal for them. All right. So depends on how you want to look at it, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there must be many, many, many people at the end of their tether like you. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, I was yeah. begging for a lockdown in January, and I, you know, very slowly we all came to the realization that we won't, we weren't calling it a holiday, we're calling it a lockdown, we we're calling it our holiday, and we just in that last week before New Year's slowly coming to the realization that it's not going to fucking happen. You know, at first it was like, yeah, there's definitely going to be another one. There has to be because everything is at a record high with the stats. It's like, okay, cool, time off, great. I'm fucking burning the fuck out. Um, we all were, and then it's like there was talk of a circuit breaker for two weeks. You know, can't do furlough, so it'll have to be a circuit breaker for two two weeks. All right, I can, I will stomach two weeks no pay just for a two week holiday, whatever. Um, and then we, you know, I knew uh, we were all working New Year's uh, New Year's Eve. It's like what they're going to announce is it? I believe it was a Sunday. It's like they always announce something on a Sunday, um, and are all at work. Why do they do that? Well, I've. Just they've always been like uh, COVID briefings on a you know on a Sunday kind of evening. Um, that's when PM has come out and said, "Look, we're going to do this, this, and this." Oh, I see. Sorry, I thought you meant the restaurant has been doing it on Sunday. Oh, I see. No, okay. no, no, no. So you've got, you've got all of us kind of just like you know looking over our phones when we should be working. It's like, oh, is this it? Is this it? And it's like, um, no. So, uh, the health secretary says we're not going to do anything before before Christmas. Okay, 
Then next week was, we're not going to do anything before New Year's. It's like, oh, okay, fine. And then <laughs> we all had New Year's Day off, and then we had a little group chat, and it's like, uh, all came, we finally got the kind of um, the news that, you know, we're going to see how things are going on. And, every, you know, chat erupts. It's like, we're not getting that fucking holiday. We'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, I showed a couple of extra days, um, and I'm going back tomorrow. Everyone's been back for a few days now. I don't give a fuck. But uh, I haven't dared ask if it's been busy. I feel like people will still be fucking... Have this kind of, like, um, do-or-die attitude, because at any point, you know, we could be locked down. So we've got to do it right now, because, you know, we'll, it's our last chance to do it. And I think that's been one of the things that's been driving people to go out more than they normally would. I mean, Christmas is terrible anyway. But... Yeah, this was pretty fucking relentless. Normally, there's a few days before Christmas where it kind of eases up, which it did, but that was only because, you know, Omicron was, you know, suddenly so so prevalent and people were frightened about it um, all over again, but not enough. We still have a couple of hundred people in the evening, but just people wouldn't go out for lunch. That was the only restraint. Otherwise, yeah, it'd be 200 people for lunch as well. <laughs> so do in London, then, do people still wear masks and things? Maybe about 10%. Uh, right in the okay, area so that I've seen, no. um, it's all right. Um, Shepherd's Bush, uh, Acton, kind of that area. When I'm walking to kind of the tube station, but you get to Central, to the West End, and what have you. No, 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 no. no. They might go in with their masks and what have you, but they'll have a fucking few. They'll be pissed by like one p.m. and it's like, ah, yeah, fuck it, I'm invulnerable now. You know. This... Yeah. And what's the point? You know, so I see people wearing masks. But I see them wearing. Maybe like, yeah, like I say, a handful of people will come in uh, wearing a mask, go down into the basement, see if they get to the table, take it off. It's like, well, why did you, why did you even bother? If you're going to wear a mask, it, is it just to cut? Is it to do some? Is it for some moral, indu you know, righteousness or something like that? I mean, if you really want to be safe, you wouldn't be here. So you're obviously not doing it to be fucking safe. Like, what the yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, the only time I see people wearing masks is in places where it, it is enforced, like larger grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else, like, no, no, not at all. No, I mean, it's not enforced anywhere. Not at all. No. Um, you'll get loads of announcements from the underground saying mask wearing is mandatory. It's not. Loads of posters and, what, and the other materials. No one's enforcing it. There was one point, maybe a couple of months ago, I think, I don't know if I mentioned it on this podcast, I know I mentioned it to you, where I got to, like, Shepherd's Bush Station, and they're saying, you can't go through the ticket barriers unless you've got a mask on. So this is really odd. I've never seen this before. Is there something in the news? And I also noticed mm -hmm. when I got off at the tube at the other end, all the barriers were open, but they're just trying to get people in and out as soon as, you know, as quickly as they could or something like that. Um, but no, that was just one station, one group of people that just took it upon themselves to say, like, you have to wear a fucking mask, you're not coming in. I guess they were, you know, a couple of them probably got fired, either team they got fired or something like that, or there would have been reprimands, because they were basically taking the law into their own hands. Cause they were, I those... like that, though. That's yeah, funny. no, it's good, but they, and then all these, they all had these no little... legal backing, you know, so no. I imagine they were fucking flayed alive for it. Right, yeah, right. I, yeah, I like the idea that all of these underground stations start to become like autonomous city states <laughs> <laughs> like it's basically like the metro video game book but no nuclear war <laughs> just <laughs> yeah i noticed so when i went back you know in the evening there was a flag outside you know <laughs> it, there's like a, a man with like an m16 no uniform or anything he just he's very polite and he says to you we run a clean house here <laughs> wear your mask <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't care where you're going. They have their own rules. If they don't want you to wear a mask, that's fine. But this city state, hmm. God bless Liverpool streets, <laughs> <laughs> the glorious nation of Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, we could do a whole podcast on uh, what's your favourite tube station. Oh, <laughs> obviously it's Cockbusters. <laughs> Naturally, never been. Don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> I already know everything I know need to know about cockfosters. I'm sure it's like a, yeah, I'm sure it's like a hamlet on you know somewhere in Greater London, but it has a wonderful name. I wonder how how much tourism they get. They must they must get a lot of people just to turn up, spend hours riding the Piccadilly line all to the end, um, just to take a photo next to that thing and then just fucking go straight back on the train back because there's going to be nothing there. 
maybe the entire local economy is built around just like a hostel <laughs> that has like a banner on the side saying, did you fall asleep on the train? It's too late. Stay here. <laughs> 15 pounds. They, oh, they just write cock fosses on everything, you know, really try and capitalize on it. Maybe they'll take photos with this. Come buy this T-shirt. It has the word cock on it. <laughs> Well, not for nothing. That's yeah. kind of what everyone does when they visit London for the first time. They'll see that and be like, oh, 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 oh. did you see that? It says cock. Cock. <laughs> Foster's the cock. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds uh, sounds great. Yeah. Everything's fine. Um, I'm jealous yeah. of you and your underground bunker, really. It's definitely been the ticket. I thought it wasn't a, you know, I thought it was a, a boondoggle, but, you know. That was, you know, 2019 for you. I've I've been eating those words ever since. <laughs> why would anyone want to live underground three <laughs> years later? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, well, uh, have you seen any films or TV? Uh, I guess. <laughs> have you seen Don't Look Up? No, I haven't. Too many people are talking about it in it. Um, I know it's, uh, and that annoys me. Kind of, you know. We, we watched um, yeah. we watched the Big Short, and we didn't like. Oh yeah, we watched the Big Short. Um, we, I seem to remember we didn't like the, its kind of very pleased with itself attitude. I know it's done, but I, th- I, th- I think his name's Adam McKay. I'm not quite sure. I know it's made by the same guy, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be. Uh, it'll have that same kind of self congratulatory vibe to it. I'll, I'm, I know. I yeah. I get the satire. Yeah. it's it's obviously going to be very heavy-handed satire, and when there is uh, certain types of people, when they say something good and clever, it's like this is probably your first time watching something that's remotely clever, isn't it? It's usually yes. EastEnders. So yeah, I haven't. I mean, I've given that on a miss for now. Um, oh, so you, have you already watched it? Yeah, I, I I saw it before I heard anything about it. I just turned Netflix on for the first time in weeks, and it was there, and I was like, okay. Well, I'll put that on. Okay. And, um, yeah, I mean, I really like the premise. I didn't hate it or anything, but... I mean, yeah, I didn't I hate the of... big short or vice... Or, uh, no, um, no. Um, um, there's just something about the style which I, I, I didn't like. Um, uh, and I I can see that it's going to be more of that. And I'll, like, I'll get to it eventually, like, but... Well, you know, I like the premise and... Uh, I like the acting and all of that. And yes, it is a bit heavy handed and it does come across kind of uh, condescending a bit. Um, But like I've heard lots of people say like this is the best metaphor for coronavirus and for the environment and, you know, for uh, basically sticking our head in the sand. And Mm -hmm. uh, they're absolutely right, but they don't know why. I'll tell you why it's the best metaphor. Because it was produced, in part, by Leo. Uh, It's a big showcase for Leo. Leonardo DiCaprio owns a private island. He owns an apartment in Manhattan. He owns a building, a massive compound in Malibu. He owns a yacht. He flies loads of places. He, You know, I mean, come on. Like, is this meant to be about climate change, but you own a private (coughs) fucking island? Yeah. And, you know... I really like the premise of it, it you know, it's sort of very silly and I'm not one of those people who like really hated it and think it's dumb. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything more to say about it, to be honest. It, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't as clever as many people say. I mean, when when is anything as clever as many people say? Mm. Well, except for Rick and Morty, that's obviously, you know, oh, raise well, a show. It's very clever, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I introduced you to that, didn't I? No, no, it was the other way around, and I was oh, raving right. about it. I, um, yeah, I don't think we were we were disciples for that first season. Then, yeah, do you think we were? I, I, I definitely was. I, I definitely was. We were talking about it a lot. Um, I, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a disciple of anything. No, but I, I, I remember I watched the pilot, and I was kind of like, I, I talked about, it, told you about it, or like almost immediately. I, re- I really loved it. Yeah, yeah. Slowly, the rest of the world spoiled it for me, as did Justin Roiland. <laughs> well, you say that. You see, I I'm of the opinion more where um, I watched the first two seasons, and yeah, I liked them, and I'm just not interested. It's not mm. like 
for me, it wasn't spoiled or anything. And, you know, I'm not like, oh, it's shit. I just, I, you know, I don't think it's that clever. And I'm, I'm just not really that interested in watching anymore, mm. you know. But why do you hate it? Because I can tell you do. No, 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 no. I don't hate it. Let the hate into your heart. Oh, I'm sure we've, we've touched on this before. I mean, I, I think it must have been season three. Yeah, we hate everything. Of course we do. It's our, it's our nature. It's our shtick, you know. Or maybe we should do an episode where we're just really lovey about everything. It's like, what the fuck is this? Or like a really syrupy, you know. In between, like, talking about all these wonderful new things on TV, we'll talk about our feelings for each other and for all the peoples in our, in, in our life. Really, really syrupy. What do you think? I mean, do you think we should re- really go for it and be like, you know, Boris Johnson is doing a, a tough job. Oh. <laughs> Things like that. And... Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, themed episode, yeah? Themed episode. <laughs> Love. <laughs> Love. Uh, yeah, do you, I mean, do you want to go off on one about it? No, I've done it before. About... I'm, I'm only going to be... Well, I was going to say spinning the wheels, but I mean, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we fucking do. Um, but I've said it before. I mean, so. I'd say that's generous, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, I think at this point, well, not even at this point, I think from the beginning, it's more like a sort of obtusely shaped rock, like not quite falling down a hill. Sort of like skidding a bit, maybe the sand moves under it a bit, and then it comes to a stop for a while and then keeps on going. <laughs> then we have to uh, unearth it a month later, and it's like, oh, this yeah, it... fucking bollocks again. <laughs> I think it's lovely what, talking uh, to you, by the way. <laughs> Mr. Leahy would call a shit rock. <laughs> Rolling down a shit hole, shit hill into a shit hole. Hmm. Uh, okay, well, I guess nothing else to say about that. Have you seen Squid Game? <laughs> Yeah, we, we talked about this already, didn't we? You hadn't seen, seen Squid Game. I said, yeah, oh. I just wanted to say that again. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, Is it good? Mm, it's all right. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. I assumed. Mm, cool. <laughs> no, I've had to watch... been fucking doing my time watching, like, dreadful Christmas bullshit. I've had to watch... I, I, will, I will say before we completely leave it as well, I... It's not like I like particularly hoped for this or anything, but I did think early on with Don't Look Up, I did think it was heading in a really interesting direction where it was going to be no one takes this seriously, no one acts because they're so self-interested, but then, like, the Joint Chiefs overthrow the government. Okay. And, like, you know, it's like, well, there's this emergency, so media blackout, rolling arrests emergency powers Mm. and we'll sort it out and i thought it was going to be like this weird indirect sort of nod to we wouldn't be in this situation if we had a dictator (laughs) but i think you hope that of any kind of uh like film or tv show don't you (laughs) yeah like watching the office us you'd be like i don't think michael is shooting enough people in the back of the head to maintain order where are the firing squads (laughs) <laughs> they had to get rid of that episode <laughs> you know what this needs it needs a military court <laughs> what, the, that episode where Dwight has a bandage around his head and it's unexplained it's because they deleted the firing squad scene <laughs> <laughs> I think Michael Scott would look good with what, a, a really heavy moustache Stalin-esque Steve Carell could easily do yeah. that yeah it gives him all this authority all of a sudden The authority he was looking for the whole time. He just had to believe. (laughs) Well, seen anything else? No. Ah, man. I I must have seen something new, but I need to to actually start making a note of things, I think. Doing doing some homework for this. I've all seen something, but obviously nothing worthy of any discussion if I can't fucking remember. Um, I've had to slog through things like Love Actually and... uh, or like oh, girl- what? Because of your girlfriend? Yeah, girlfriend stuff at Christmas. I was like, okay, I'll play ball and be nice. Oh, and, right. Um, so... I never got to see Die Hard. So that was a compromise. That's my Christmas movie, but we did get around to it. Well, you never seen Die Hard? No, I've seen Die Hard. I just want to watch it at Christmas. If I have to watch, you know, her Christmas movies, then I'll, I'll pick that as my choice. I can, I can, I can do that. 
Now, come over to my apartment, she said. It'll be fun, she said. We'll watch movie, she said. And now I'm watching Love Actually, when I'd much rather be stuck in a ventilation shaft. Hmm. Well, funny you should say that. You know, my Christmas day was spent playing nurse to her because she did have the fucking plague. Um, and one of the, I don't. I, I mean, you're talking sort of about actual like buboes as well, <laughs> like actual plague. I mean, she probably would have recovered quicker. She's, uh... Apparently, it's extremely easy to treat. Yeah, I've heard the same Did thing. Did you know? Same yeah. thing about um, leprosy as well, or it's called Hansen's disease now. But yeah, it's just yeah, that's it's... the thing with leprosy; it just buffs right out. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We're not. We, you don't have to see a GP. We're going to send you to the to the workshop. Okay. They've got a belt sander. Polish you right up. <laughs> yeah. It's just. It's just like a skin infection where it's, we just have to cut out the infection. And yeah, you're going to lose a couple of fingers, but. <laughs> <laughs> but what we'll do with this, everything we file off you, we'll compress it into a faux diamond. And you can t you can have that attached to a nice piece of jewelry that you can give a loved one. A faux diamond. You've seen those, right? Yeah. I know. I, um, I was yeah, talking to my yeah. sister, and she's like, oh, when her little dog passes away, she's going to have his ashes compressed to, into jewellery. It's like, oh, okay. It's like, <laughs> my. It's like, so what do you think about that? It's like, well, when it comes to dealing with the remains of a loved one, I want one thing. It's like, I want their skull, you know, I want their head sandblasted so I can just have the skull. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I want a collection. Didn't your dad used to say that that was in his will? Yeah, he did, but obviously Buster, because I, I don't. At this point, I don't think my dad can either read or write. Because you know, you're not legally complied to do comply compliant. Compliant. Of course not. No, because people write no. all kinds of shit in their will, and then society would collapse. I know. I'd fucking write a few outrageous things in there. And he was saying like, right. "Yeah, I want you to keep my skull after I die." So like, well, if uh, if it's me, then I'll give. I'll, I want my son to take my brain and 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 pickle it. You know. I want it suspended in formaldehyde. Or failing that, just pickle juice, you know. Just white wine yeah. vinegar and some sugar. Boil it a little Full bit. Full of protein. <laughs> but yes, to keep it. Eat around the tumours. <laughs> oh, right, okay. This is why he was so sad all the time. Right, yeah. <laughs> Shrunken hypothalamus. <laughs> om, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> yeah, nice bit of brain. Um, right, so... Love Actually, was that nice? No. <laughs> I seem to remember the, there's a bit in Love Actually, correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't seen it in like at least 10 years, where Hugh Grant, the Prime Minister, is talking about 9-11 and saying that it shows us how much people loved, loved each, each other. other. Yeah, that's the first because, two minutes. <laughs> because, right, because the, phone, the last phone calls people make aren't people... What, aren't people calling people up and going like, right, I I'm going to die you. <laughs> in the next couple of hours, so I want you to know you're a fucking twat. <laughs> I mean, what? Like, yeah, that 9-11 definitely showed us that, didn't it? It showed us how much love is in the world. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, do you, do you remember when fucking Rudy Giuliani came out and got everyone around and went like, this is actually a good thing, guys. This is love. <laughs> Look, right there in the ground. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you remember you remember that war that happened in Vietnam? What happened and everything? You remember when like people were killing each other and stuff? That's love. Mm -hmm. Those Vietnamese people were just killing uh, US soldiers because they love Vietnam. And the US soldiers were just doing it because they love America. They all wanted to see their mums at the end of the day, you know? They all wanted to see their They're mummies, people. you know? If, if we didn't have love, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's so kind of soppy that you kind of gloss over what he's actually saying. That's a very, very good point. <laughs> I, I, when I'd obviously put that on at that point, even that early on, obviously, because I'm uh, doing my best boyfriending at that point, I had obviously switched to absolutely brain dead. So I was not fully taking in what I was watching. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise, I should... sequel to absolutely fabulous. Uh, otherwise, you know, I know my girlfriend really loves it, and I obviously don't want to spoil it. Otherwise, I'd have been bullying her for that. It's like, can you are you listening to what he's saying? <laughs> so I just stomach it and I just yeah. go, yes, dear. <laughs> Here's another sick bucket. Doesn't the name come from his character as well? Saying, like, why are you going off with Tiffany from EastEnders? And he says. Well, love, actually. <laughs> like, someone's like, Oi, you're just with her to bang her, aren't you? No, love, actually. <laughs> Isn't it from that? 
Yeah, yeah, no. It's uh, the the title comes from his opening monologue, the nine eleven one. He's like, "Well, love actually is all around." He's like, "Ah," and as he says it, of course, the the words, the titles pop up as well. It's oh, it's beautiful. And like, there's some nice money shots of uh, Heathrow at the same time as well. It's like, yeah, that fills me with <laughs> money shots of Heathrow. <laughs> Whoa, look at that Ooh. airport porn. Yeah. Terminal 5, yeah, that'll be fucking great. Terminal 5, if you know what I mean. That's like, you know, it's like the shitter, isn't it? Because it's the back one. That's the shitter. (laughs) Yeah, Love Actually, not to be confused with the 1980s video nasty uh, featuring uh, renegade military commander Love, which is just called Love Actual. (laughs) It's like that, that strikes terror when it's like... Well, we know we know we're fighting love's soldiers, but you're telling me that love actual is here. <laughs> yeah, he's here. Well, that means that oh shit, they breached the compound. Okay. <laughs> he's here. Love's here. <laughs> Don't forget to save a bullet for yourself. <laughs> Hang on, I just have to call my parents and tell them how much I love them because it There's is no actually time. all around. <laughs> we're going down. Oh god! Don't let him get you. Don't don't surrender. It'll be worse. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, um, is there any particular reason why she likes that film? Or is it just any rom-com? I mean, she's, uh, she's partial to rom-coms, but that's just, um, I don't know. I just know it's part of her Christmas tradition. So, I didn't question it. Um, I didn't ask her what was the, the genesis of this. We just, yeah. I know it's a thing for a lot of other people. You know, I know they would, there were certain cinemas and what have you that were doing uh, Christmases or uh, screenings of specific Christmas movies, and Love Actually was on the roster for a lot of them. So it's a thing. For I didn't people. know it was a Christmas movie, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all set at Christmas. All right, okay, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I see. I, I, do you have any Christmas traditions? Because I think now that you've said that, I, I realise I don't. There's nothing I watch as a tradition. Or I don't think I do anything as a tradition. No, I mean, I suppose the tra- tradition is now. Um, I kind of try to dodge as many presents as I can. People ask me what I want and what I want to do. And my response is invariably as little as humanly possible, um, which isn't enough for a lot of people. And it's like, come on, don't be miserable. It's like, what do you want? It's like, well, I, just get me like... A blowjob. <laughs> well, not if my nan's offering, but, you know. No, that'd be a tit wank. <laughs> No, she had coronavirus this year. That would have been irresponsible. You know, Damien, you gotta get you gotta get your ageism just out of the way. Old people just get softer. Oh, and that, mm, mm. it could be fun. Mm. It could be fun. But I might, <laughs> I might. But if I'm going to conduct this experiment, would you at least do me the courtesy of allowing me to kind of jump out of the gene pool for it, please? You know, at least wear this Rinder mask. <laughs> 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 Don't forget to shout surprise, thus, thus waving any culpability you might have in a court of law. <laughs> yeah, we, we if if the gorilla hadn't shouted surprise, then this would have been sacred assault. But as it stands, because they did shout surprise, it's just a surprise titwank. <laughs> It's the idea of Chris Paul's face just leaning back going, oh no, what do I do? <laughs> As he, and he's furiously working his tits, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I guess we should explain because no one knows what we're talking about now. Have uh, we not brought up Chris Paul's surprise <laughs> tit whacked a gorilla before? Uh, uh, basically, uh, at school, we went to school together and uh, I don't think it's even a rumour we started. One of the best parts of school was just the completely bonkers... Stupid rumours that people would pass on about each other, uh, and one of our friends was accused of of su- he wasn't he wasn't the victim he was accused of surprise tit wanking a gorilla. Oh, that's right. So I got it the wrong way around. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but still, I mean, what, you yeah. know, stupid thing to say, really. But <laughs> yeah, but you know, like what gorilla? But if you put his name at the beginning of any like flagrant statement like that, you'd just be like, yep, that's the new thing now. <laughs> yeah. He surprised I mean, to gorilla. The most believable one was that his brother stuck a cigarette <laughs> down, his, down his urethra <laughs> and had to go to hospital to get it out. Uh, trying his hand um, on a little docking. Uh, but we also had a couple of friends uh, who totally weren't gay. 
Um, <laughs> you could tell they weren't gay because they would talk about how uh, being gay was gross. Yes, and they uh, had their so after, that made it after very school clear Christian that they weren't club. gay. Um, no, I'm not even talking about those two. I'm talking about Ben and Dave. Okay. And, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and Ben, ben would say things like, I, he was a bit older than me, and... You know when some you know when you're like fourteen and someone's seventeen and you can't really like question it the same yeah, way. It's odd. But it but it's like what? I remember one time he was going on about like yeah, but if you think about it, if you bum a man, that's not gay because a hole is a hole. <laughs> it's only gay if you get bummed. And like I remember Skinner next to me going like Ben, have you bummed someone? <laughs> like, why this? What, we're not talking about this. Like what are you talking about? Um, but I remember the best rumor about them you know because they were so not gay mm. uh was that they uh would occasionally uh get really drunk and have a competition where they would fold up a bit of paper uh and stick it in their knobs and then light it on fire and the first one to pull the paper out uh would have to give the other one a blow job uh. <laughs> and there must be elements of truth in that um but... it can't be true can it but but you know, um, I'm sure they put stuck. St- I I believe 100 percent that they would stick that in their dicks. But whether or not, you know, the victor would be awarded with fellatio, uh, I'm a little skeptical of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I you know, I mean, it, it's not like I, I am like that's terrible. You know, it's more that they were like adamant that they weren't gay mm. and that gay. You know, it wasn't just that. It wasn't like we're not gay. It was like. They were they were very homophobic, which was, I guess, in hindsight, the giveaway. Mm. <laughs> and I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, I remember as well, people would talk about that famous game that surely no one has actually played, but apparently people play it in private schools. Soggy, Soggy Biscuit. biscuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the game where no one wins. Do you want to explain what it is? Uh, well, it's a... Uh... It's a, you get a group of roguish young chaps um, and a, a, a biscuit of your choice. I would say rich tea, of course, I naturally. It's meant to be a digestive or, yeah. Um, but I mean, you wouldn't want a rich tea. You would want a digestive to soak in all the cum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, wait to, wait to fucking, you know, uh, unbury Pink the wafers. lead there. You spoiled my story. Sorry. Man. Nah, that's what it's, oh. I'm upset. No, go on. Well, I'll just I'll just change come to Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> that would require editing. No. That would require effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, well, it's a milk race. After that, isn't it? It's just the they all they're all around the circle. You know, Jack in it, and the last one to come on the biscuit has to eat it. Yeah, I I've always I've never got it. Like, what's the like what's what's gratifying about that for anyone? I don't know. Well, I mean, secondly, I mean, if you do, you, do you think if I if I had gone to a private school and done that, I could have gotten away with like, hey, everyone, let's play soggy biscuit. All right, the last one to come has to eat it, and then, and then all jerking off, and then I'm, you know, I'm not coming. Second to last kid comes. I watch, and then I just stop wanking and just pull my trousers up and go, go on, then eat it. <laughs> oh right see I, I you've got come. a strategy so, so you were the last one to come hmm. i don't understand like what why would you anyone want to partake in that i don't know i mean i guess you know is, if is you... it just like like secretly we all really love cum but we don't want to admit it it could be is that it there's an element of that yeah 100%. i mean there must be right <laughs> i don't know and does no one want to talk about like it's not you know if you if you are a straight person it's not like normal to have a fucking erection in front of like s- seven other erections. <laughs> like th- that would that would be that would turn me off. Yeah, it'd be an odd environment to maintain an erection. Well, for me at least. But I mean, but, I guess you know. But then again, got, maybe I'm a prude because maybe I always thought that got, with porno theaters. Clearly, I mean, I guess that game will have, uh, will have kind of erupted, not erupted, uh, kind of grown out of <laughs> kids just exploring it, you know. Maybe you know, some of them were gay, and that's why they... Well, I mean, for some people, they do enjoy it, so that's got to be why it's a thing. I'm sure, it, I'm sure it happens all over the fucking place. Maybe not in schools, but I'm sure there are consenting adults that do that shit all the fucking time. Or some variation well, of it. Well, you know that um, David Cameron and Boris Johnson went to the same school. Right, okay. 
same private school. Yeah, yeah. Well, when they went to that school, lot you know, lots of English private schools. I don't know if they do this, but they did it where, sort of informally, the older boys would. Do you know what I mean by batsman? Have you ever heard that? Mm. It's like a mil- mil- you know British military term. It's sort of old fashioned when you'd have like a colonel go, "He's my batsman." And it's like a hand-picked soldier who basically is his personal servant. Right, okay. Like, you know, someone who, um, you know, like, does everything. Like, does yeah, their right, breakfast for yeah, them, yeah, shines their shoes. Got the gist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the gist, yeah. Well, they had the same thing in school, but they call them fags. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it is, meant, it is meant to be sort of like that, right? Like, faggot. Right, okay. Um, right, and David Cameron... I'm not making this up. You can look this up. David Cameron was... Boris Johnson's fag. Really? Yeah. It doesn't mean they were having sex. Right. Or anything. But he was his personal assistant. You know, right, like okay. when he was like when he was twelve and Boris Johnson was fifteen or sixteen, it was like that. What was and this did you read this in the autobiography, I presume? <laughs> it was I mean it's well known. Yeah. You know, they both they both were in the Bollingdon Club and everything. Yeah. I've never heard um, that though. That's Yeah, yeah. And you know, the, obviously no one is ever going to admit what goes on there. But I read a, a one of, um, God, I want to say W.G. Graves, but that doesn't sound right. Graves is, Robert Graves, uh, who was a, uh, I suppose, upper class uh, person in the 1900s. He did a really good account of world war one called goodbye to all that he also wrote um other books and sort of autobiographical works he went to private school and he talks about like the boys having sex with each other all the time oh really yeah and like come on of course they are Mm. i mean it's just just boys and you know you're leaving them to their own devices i mean not like all the boys or anything Mm. not like every you know but yeah, like he he talks about inappropriate relationships between, you know, like teenage boys and older teenage boys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and things like that. And um, yeah, but, yeah. I was sort of thinking that when yeah. you mentioned when she mentioned Ben, because yeah, we was like what seventeen, eighteen when we were, basically there would used to be a lot of hangouts at that house with a lot of people. But yeah, he would turn up. The the age, the difference in like those three years. Yeah, yep, he may as well have been like a thirty-year-old, and I seem to remember he would turn up with like fourteen-year-old girlfriends and stuff like that. It's like this is odd. I mean, we would yes. be like fifteen. It's like even I would feel like a fourteen-year-old girl. If I didn't have a well, I didn't have a girlfriend until you know a couple of years after that anyway. But if I had a, a girlfriend at that age, you'd have to be in the same year at school, otherwise, you know, it would be weird. It would be weird, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, it's cool if you were like in year ten. You'd get like the shit ripped out of you if you were going out with a year nine. One hundred percent. You know, like, oh my god. You know, yeah. But um, he was a big dude, so he weren't gonna fucking take the fucking piss. But it's like, come the fuck on. Really? Let's. We'll just kind of. Well, we did what we did, which was just you know support the wall and hit the booze and just be judgy little fucks. He was like, Ben's. A, he's a bit of a shit, isn't he? Yeah. All right, drink. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who you know, I guess, you know, I didn't care, but, um, well, yeah. He's yeah, in prison now. Of... <laughs> well, he, he, you know, later on, he had a job where he was um, basically on call for an alarm company. And, like, the guy was, a, you know, growing up, the guy was like an alcoholic. Oh, really? I, I mean, I can't, I, yeah, I mean, like, seriously, like, like, had to drink, like, get shit-faced every day. I mean, he must have got into a car crash or something by now, or hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully got his act together. Hopefully, but... he's at least off the fucking road then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Wow. Oh, I think we've covered it all now. Toilets come, paedophilia, and it's all there. And school. <laughs> and school a bit. Uh, so yeah, so I I <laughs> did say to you that the subject of this would be. Betty White versus the Queen. But I didn't actually say which Queen, so take your pick. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I just, you know, we don't even go into these subjects anymore. Why bother? No, but just bring it up so they know what they could have won, you know. Uh, I'll say... Uh, <laughs> a, a completely fruitless chat about that. 
Oh no, no there's, like, there's one, no like... chat. There's no chat. I'm going to say I'll pick RuPaul. Um, RuPaul wins because of of course age. <laughs> Betty White would go down what? in seconds. Well, I mean, he can accelerate very fast, can't he? He's a very experienced, very experienced drag race driver. <laughs> That's what that show's about, isn't it? Absolutely is, yeah. Speedway, speedway, yeah. speedway. Yeah. Now, you can tell that this contestant's really, you know, put it on because he started with this massive bouffant and it stayed on his head, even though he did like 150 miles an hour down this runway. <laughs> <laughs> or is it, is it like, uh, like RuPaul's Drag Race where the, it's dudes in drag, but they also have to, you know, it's it's also an engineering show where they have to make their own... What like soap rock, soap box derby car? <laughs> so no so we got a, an element of scrap heap challenge as well. Get those demographics, well. Damien. <laughs> we can capture a massive market. <laughs> RuPaul. <laughs> All right, so it's RuPaul and Betty White on scrap heap challenge. Okay. <laughs> I think Betty Betty White can be the uh, adjudicator, and it's uh, it's RuPaul finding out that Queen Elizabeth exists, and RuPaul takes umbrage to this because RuPaul insists that RuPaul is the Queen. <laughs> like you refer to her as Queen Elizabeth II or nothing at all, because I'm the Queen. <laughs> um, well, you know, R.I.P. Betty White, I guess uh, that was in the news big time. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I. Well, it was at work. It was for New Year's Eve, and I remember they basically ca- uh, came out with the news just before the New Year's moment. So I read it just after the thing. I know a couple of people that would give a shit about that, so I made a beeline for them and immediately ruined their New Year's by telling them Betty <laughs> White <Wyatt> died. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a cunt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember I, I went to India in uh, I want to say 2008, and. Um, Everywhere I everywhere I got, people came up to me and saying, "Excuse me, excuse me, sir. I don't mean to bother you. I've got some very bad news. Michael Jackson has died." <laughs> and I'd be like, "I know." Like what? Okay, right. But people would like come up to me and tell me, like, "You might not have heard the news. I can see you're a white dude here, so I, I imagine you're interested in this. Michael Jackson has died." And uh, you know, I would obviously say, "Who?" <laughs> Stop fucking with them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's an odd thing, really. That, yeah, but I, I still remember. I, I I remember the the night he died because I have a beautiful memory of it, courtesy of you. I really? Said, yeah, because I don't know. Obviously, you were well traveling, but I was in bed at the time. I just got a, f- a fucking text message from you. And it just said the following, and I remember it, you know, perfectly. Um, Michael Jackson is dead. Good. <laughs> oh. Does it doesn't sound like something I'd say? No, of course not. No, no, no. Yeah, Why is that picture Good. burnt into my head so clearly? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds more like a you message. Sure, sure, sure it was. <laughs> And that I was just being optimistic because he's in heaven now. Oh, of course, absolutely. I believe that yeah. that uh, that started our you know death watch. From then, we'd, we'd frequently be in touch saying like this person is now dead. We'd be doing it. Well, to this we day. we we would do a thing as well of you know whenever it was a new year, new yeary type event. Sort of well, who do we think is going to die this year? Hmm. And we never got it right. No, we said William Shatner a million times. Maybe he's still going. I, I'm convinced he won't die now. Yeah. He's just going to get to the point where he consumes the entire universe, isn't he? Yeah. Wasn't that William Shatner or was that someone else? No, Tim Allen was going to consume the universe. Tim Allen. Yeah, and then William Shatner has to stop him. Anyone at this point, because Tim Allen's out of fucking control. <laughs> he's just growing exponentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, who do you think's gonna? Die? Who do you think's gonna die then? Let's let's end on a cheery note. I'm gonna say Sean Connery. <laughs> okay. In the next year. Okay. Yep. Briefly resurrected for you know Valentine's something like that, but promptly dead by my birthday, I'm sure. Um... So are you are you masturbating? Oh, so can you? Sorry, I was rolling something in my hands. Oh, so I apologize. Yeah, your knob. 
That sounds pretty wet, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> Oldies but goldies. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it's when you're doing the double... Ah. It's like, is there, is there more than one penis there? <laughs> slappy, slappy, slap. Uh, yeah, um, I know. Predictions. Yeah, I'm going to make a, a wild prediction, so if it comes true, I'll sound like a genius. Um, Chandler. Okay. He doesn't look yep. well. Doesn't he? No, he looks he looks mashed. Right. Okay. Well, I, well, maybe that's not. All right then. Um, well, let me think of someone young then. Um, no, I mean, who's I, you? I've I, I read some. Ariana Grande. Ooh. Was she the one that was into like satanic rituals at some point? Yeah, maybe she gets. Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, she kind of gets embroiled in some weird kind of satanic cult. I can see that. She sacrificed. Um, if, if Chandler's going to go, it's because I, I, I don't know if this is bullshit or not. I just read something very briefly online, and as we know, it's a safe haven for, you know, information. Um, that he, uh, he went to school with Justin oh. Trudeau, but him and a friend of his used right. to bully the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you know if uh, the Prime Minister of Canada is still holding grudges and is going to send the hit squads, but it could be this year. He used to bully the shit out of him, but he wasn't his fag. <laughs> God, I mean, imagine you know David Cameron, uh, Prime Minister of Britain. No one's ever going to vote for Brexit. Uh, let's just do it and get it out. Let's do the vote for Brexit and get it out of the way. Because um, you know, there's no chance that people are going to vote to leave the EU. I'll just do it, and I'll appease people who do want to. They'll lose, and that'll be it. And then your high school bully slash potentially rapist launches this campaign and does get the does get Britain to leave the EU, and then fucking becomes the prime minister. That's got to hurt. Yeah. Luckily for David Cameron, he is married to one of the richest women in Britain. <laughs> Must soften the blow. Well, yeah. I'm sure he can. He can definitely afford his underground bunker and a little bit of time off. So he'd be doing fine. Well, I heard he doesn't mind about it being soft, mm. as long as it's in lines, he'll snort it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> woof, woof. Um, who else? I think one of the Chuckle Brothers might die this year. I thought one of the Chuckle Brothers was dead. Okay, well, the one that's alive might die this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't have any way to corroborate that. I just that I... what if um what if the only other person in that show who wasn't a Chuckle brother uh, dies and obviously no one knows his name so they have to like put it in the news like in quotes no slacking man dies <laughs> do you remember that no slacking uh, I don't but it's you paint a lovely picture in my mind so it's fine uh not a prediction more of a wish sounds harsh but no Edmonds don't yep. know why. Just want it. It's something I want. And the, and the way he'll die is they'll they'll find him suffocated in a blobby suit, and <laughs> like Five Nights at Freddy's style, you know. <laughs> they'll come to this conclusion that it was some sort of sex game, and like the person oh, pumping air we're into this. Oh, talk sex games. It's got to be Barrymore. He's got to be for the fucking chop now. He hasn't had. I thought a Barrymore was dead. Was he? No. Uh, is that celebrity dead? <laughs> Go on, tell me, please. I don't know. Oh, do you want me to look it up? All right, fine. Fucking <laughs> yeah, I feel like being pampered. I don't want to do the typing. All right, okay. Um, I'll be sure to not edit any of this out either. <laughs> Barrymore dead. I'll type. <laughs> Fucking hell! And the first thing that comes up is Michael Barrymore. That's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're not just nope. no, not a call to join the uh, anti Barrymore watch. We'll put him in the ground this year. Well, I would have thought it would come up with Drew Barrymore first, but no, Michael Barrymore. Um, yeah, well, all right. I guess we've run out of anything to say at all. I mean, obviously, that happened several years ago now. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, We're just indulging ourselves at this point. <laughs> it doesn't even feel like that, to be honest, mate. No. <laughs> I don't feel indulged. No, I didn't. I didn't like being dragged out of my coffin for this. I assumed you were in. <laughs> I imagined it would be a pretty good sound booth. Yeah. All right, all right. I'll, I'll take that. Next time I'll try it in there. 
Yeah, in the coffin. Well, I think we should just end with awkward silence rather than say anything. I thought that's what we do every week. Because I, I leave it rolling, you know, for a few minutes. I, I, I just expect... Oh, shit, do you? Out. I should have... Oh, right, fuck. <laughs> you sent me audio? What? <laughs> I just... All I do is sync these things and press send. Whatever. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for listening, I guess. I mean, not I guess, you know, thank you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose apology is in order, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And I, Thank you. We're sorry. <laughs>